when the set of Akintist heretics prove the causes behind their heresy, February 3, 2024 Anno Domini. Official Publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in Exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the more clearly expressed heretical and thus false opinions of the set of Akintist heretics, namely the assembly of them behind the ipso facto, and declared, excommunicated heretic Donald J. Sanborn, in regards to their fabricated and heretical opinions regarding the novice ordo apostate pro-communist sect of Satan, endangering the integrity and purity of the Catholic religion, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and proving thus their essential lack of understanding of the truth, which spirit of understanding is not supplied by God to his enemies, so that they could be visible as the evil trees bearing evil fruits, for which they are visible. In today's publication, we would like to present uh, yet another proof of the heresies of the sort of a contest heretics. And why is it so that they are true heretics? Because that God is not helping them. The guidance of the Holy Ghost is not with them. And precisely for these reasons, that it will be illustrated. We will play excerpt of one of them that is that if so facto excommunicated and with dandus, that means the higher degree of excommunication, uh, Donald Sanborn, who is not a bishop, based on those defects that we have presented in uh, the main recording on Serba Contest and what Archbishop Go from Vietnam did, uh, and defect of intentions to having to mark God with telephone on his altar when he consecrated, so called consecrated, evidently this, the, and plus heretic, this Gerard de Rolier, which is the so called succession of. That leads to Sanborn, and that's just simply to prove this in, in what he says. It's self-evident that, that that person is not not Catholic bishop, because he would be guided by the Holy Ghost to present the law of the Church, that means canon law, and the constraints of the canon law, and not to say things that he says. So we will show the... This is one of the uh, canons. First of all, this is like the prevention from... Uh, from having the, um, the the Catholic faith will be uh, subject to non-Catholic services, non-Catholic uh, ceremonies that truly are abomination in front of God in such ceremonies. So it is unlawful for the faithful to assist in any active manner or to take part or to take part in the sacred services of non-Catholics. Sacred word sacred. That's why it's not possible. That that's what the sect has changed too instead of using holy, because it doesn't say holy here, because the, their services are not holy, but it's sacred, that means the general term designating uh, that they at least as, uh, attempt to, uh, to address God in their, in their uh, abominations that is, that is, it is, as it is, or at least they say they address God, but they don't honor God at all. They are those who uh, our Lord calls um, at that day, uh, some of these will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and cast out devils and so forth? And he said, he will say, I never knew you. Depart, and then he adds, depart, depart from me, ye all that, that work iniquity, which is in the general terms applicable also to these heretics, because they, they, they can claim as much as they, they wish that they love God and serve God, and they don't, because they are heretics. So it says right here, and then merely passive material presence may be tolerated on account of civil office. That means the actual when the body goes into the ground, or uh, uh, to honor the, the friends. Which I we, we don't see how that is even possible today to establish when uh, such friendship should not exist uh, between Catholic faithful and somebody who goes to heretics. That should be avoided. Such people should be avoided the heretics because the level, the danger of perversion is so great. It's, it's, so that's what it says at the end, the, the underlying part provided there's no, there's not. At funerals, uh, for great reasons, that has to be approved. Uh, for great reasons, at funerals of non-Catholics, their marriage, marriages and similar solemnities, provided there's danger of neither perversion nor scandal. That doesn't exist today. The danger is always there, and it's, that, that is not absolutely not possible to follow. So, uh,
this is another canon as it is. The, the faithful are in conscience obliged to profess. That was canon. Let's see what canon was it. That's canon 1217 Code of Canon Law. So this one is uh, the faithful are in conscience obliged to profess their faith publicly uh, whenever they are silenced, subterfuge, or manner of acting imports an implicit denial of their faith, a contempt of religion, or an insult to God or a scandal to the neighbor. And then on the bottom it says, The Catholics shall not enter into any dispute or conferences with non-Catholics, especially public ones, without permission of the Holy See or an urgent case of the ordinary. We don't have any more ordinary, so it has to be approved by the Holy See. And we don't even consider the necessary, necessary to speak to people who are heretics because then they are not subject to our authority in the sense of that, that they would be obliged. They are outside the church on the way to hell. That's it. And they are obligated to obey the church as it is, but that we don't have any responsibility for them unless they appear to heresy and become members of the church uh, and follow our guidance, commands, directions, and so forth ordinances and legislature and everything else so then uh, this is one that is very important that we will touch and that's what the uh, what this heretic sanborn is violating and is following uh, heretical doctrine that is and it says since canon 731 it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics even though they are in good faith and ask for them unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. So there's no such thing as that to permit a heretics to approach the sacraments. So if there's any, uh, any person that, that, uh, that we would not know, he would not be admitted. That's just simply an old way to allow somebody who we don't know at this point, at this level, and that has to be maintained. And what you will hear in, the, in that excerpt, and it's fairly long, about seven some minutes, from this heretic Sanborn, it's self-evident that he does not follow this canon 731. And uh, that's self-evident that he's a heretic. Why is it so? St. Paul in Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Uh, supporting one another in charity, careful to keep one unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are called in one hope of your vocation, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One body and one spirit, that means the Holy Mother Church, the Roman Catholic Church, this same true Catholic Church, and the Holy Ghost guiding that body, as it is. And one Lord, one faith, one baptism, that doesn't need to be translated, that's self-evident, as it is. So, and then this is Canon 23.14, Excommunication and it's ipso facto, ipso facto by their very fact they are heretics. The Catholic faith comes first, so it doesn't have to be declared. Neither it could be declared that, that, except that we have issued the, the bull of excommunication on May 15, 15 2021, on a domini by our apostolic authority. So it says, excommunication reserved to the Holy See, speciali modo, by a special way, befalls. Befall all apostates from the Christian faith, which is Catholic tradition, and all heretics and schismatic, canon 2314. Consequently, the Institute holds that its priests may administer sacraments legitimately only to those who have repudiated the Vatican II religion. It is not in accordance with reason that a priest who is using Epikeia to justify his sacramental jurisdiction distributes sacraments to those who accept the authority of the Novus Ordo hierarchy. I'm just going to stop here, Your Excellency, because I always think of your quote, if Bergoglio is your pope, you can go to him for your sacraments. Not only you can, you must. You must. Uh, the, uh, yes, we're uh, often criticized for refusing sacraments to people. Uh, and I want to make clear here that it, we're not saying that they're public sinners. We're not saying that they're heretics or anything like that or outside of the church. We're just saying that it doesn't make any sense from the point of view of Epikeia that they come to us. In other words, we need a justification to give sacraments in these times in an extraordinary manner. So if you are, if you feel justified in going to the new mass or to go going to an unicum mass, uh, 
there is no reason for you to approach us. So you cannot reasonably approach us. Remember, epikeia has to be reasonable. And we have no reasonable cause to give you sacraments. So that, because if you feel that, that, that the Pope is in Rome and that's Francis, uh, you should be going to a, a, a priest who is in, in communion with Francis. And that isn't even SSPX, because for communion you need two. Both sides have to agree. So, so you should be going to the new mass if you say that that man is the Pope. So the, that's the reason is that you have no business being here. We have no business giving you the sacrament. <laughs> that's the reason for it. That because we have to be faithful to that principle of epikeia in order to uh, presume a sacramental jurisdiction, the, the license to give sacraments. Because I always think of your quote, if Bergoglio is your pope, you can go to him for your sacraments. Not only you can, you must. You must. Uh, the, uh, yes, we're uh, often criticized for refusing sacraments to people. Uh, and I want to make clear here that it, we're not saying that they're public sinners. We're not saying that they're heretics or anything like that or outside of the church. That's it. That's it. So that means that no matter what they practice, they don't, they don't get called uh, named heretics, declared heretics as such. Although they are in front of God, they are heretics and the church recognizes them as heretics. So that's the proof who these people are. That's, that's self-evident proof what he just said. That's the proof. He doesn't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost. And what we have shown uh, right here, that's they are excommunicated, so he cannot be uh, giving them giving them uh, um, this is the first Corinthians right here. That's precisely why they are excommunicated. It says uh, first Corinthians 11, 26 to 27. It says for as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the chalice, you shall assure the death of our Lord until he come. That is plain language of the reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary, which this novice order of horrible sect does not have. They mocking God with their Protestant reenactment of the Last Supper, which is heresy and idolatry, because they facing the, the, these so-called ministers they facing the people and showing them the last supper community meal that's not but that's not sacrifice to god therefore whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of our lord unworthily he shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of our lord that applies to those who approach the true mass which these heretics don't have to begin with and come there with the state in the state of mortal sin but it also applies to those who mock god in a way, by application, by implication of the of their intention to mock God or to go to that they don't care or they don't take care whether they uh, go to a proper ceremony, and so there's no way to give them a holy communion, and, and he must call them heretics because they go to if he has the knowledge that they go to novice other sect that he has to call him heretics and run them out of there if they try to enter. Uh, unless he instructs them, they are willing to listen. That means those who are not willing to listen, he has to run them out and not, not permit them to, 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 to enter to begin with. And at the time of the, of the uh, if he was truly bishop, he had truly mass, then he would not permit somebody who would, whom he, at this times, these evil times, would not permit somebody whom he doesn't know to, to enter the church, period, or the chapel or the oratory. Because uh, then you commit sacrilege, you give somebody, you don't take care, you commit mortal sin. Uh, giving somebody who is unworthy recipient to the, the, the Holy Communion. And this, these times, uh, not that he would, there's, there's another canon. Uh, and we wanted to show this. Uh, the canon um, that applies to unworthy people, but that applies to those who are within the, within the faith. Only that they are sinners, public sinners, and so forth. This is a lot of words. These are heretics. That's why the distinction in the canon law is made. It's right here. Notoriously unworthy Catholics, such as those excommunicated, interdicted, or of public bad repute, they speak about Catholics. So it's not heretics are no longer Catholic. So this is uh, the exception of those, are, those who are 
known to be public sinners. Uh, but they are still practicing the Catholic faith, which is Catholic tradition. So that's the distinction. Yes, this is Canon 855. But still, interdicted or of public bad repute must not be admitted to Holy Communion until after their repentance and amendment is known and satisfaction has been made for public scandal. Occult sinners who secretly ask for Holy Communion should be refused by the priest if he knows that they have not amended. If, however, they ask publicly and the priest cannot pass them over without scandal, he may give them Holy Communion. That's just a precaution. This is the distinction of the situation. Because those people, uh, he may know that if they come and he knows that this is their secret, but he knows about their, uh, and knows that it would cause a scandal. Today, that's, that's a very, very rare situation as it is to begin with. But let's say, for example, that they, uh, he would know that they are public sinners and they are not willing to amend, although they go to, com they could, they go to confession, but that they are repeated offenders and those kind of things. And then he has no um, certitude that they are making good confession and, and, and all these things that are involved. And they have not made satisfaction for their public scandals or uh, let's say detractions and those things that so there's still not not sufficient grounds for them to give, you, give them holy communion they might be instead of mortal sin in other words then he uh, may refuse them but if they if he cannot pass them over it says without scandal that it may cause because then the people will start thinking of it imply that they are somehow disfavored or something is going on. This is a very rare situation. But when it comes to heretics, that's forbidden. So that's why the canon stands. It's, it's, there's, there's just simply no way uh, to... This is much more serious because those people are no longer Catholic. That's the distinction. So yes, it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics. What this same one has said, it's violation of, the, of this canon right here. Clear violation. It is not possible to allow people whom you don't know, who may be members of the Novus Ordo sect, who have not con converted, who have not abjured their heresies, so they don't even do this, the same one, they don't do this. So it is not possible to allow them to approach the sacraments. Period. Until they, are, they repented, they renounced they gone through the whole process. That means abjuration of a heresy. There's formula, formula to be recited, a couple of pages, and they have to sign it and be witnessed. And they have to abjure that heresy as it is and promise obedience to the Holy See. So, and that's very, fairly old recitation from the, uh, uh, it's a recording in the ritual of Armano and so forth. That, uh, It dates back to even before, you know, right now, but before uh, the reign of Pope Pius the Ninth. So when somebody was received from heresy, they have to re they have to recite it. That's still the law of the church. There's no such thing as bypassing it. So because these heretics are not following, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yes, it does, and it will be followed by this Holy See. And we have done so with those very few that converted. Um, but not only that, but they have to, if they come from the sect, they, they have to be conditionally baptized to make sure that they truly receive the sacrament because the members of the sect can't be trusted and will not be trusted. And uh, we will not investigate very thoroughly because we truly don't know what, they, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And that person might not even know all the details. So it's in the best interest of that soul, that of the convert, to, and the church insists on this. As like any other the church has done with previously with the conver converts from a Protestant sect. If some Protestant sects have valid baptism, but it's outside the church, but then there's no way of proving it. There's no way of giving, having the certitude, and that sacrament is essential to be administered correctly. So there's, there's no, just simply no way to bypass it like this, which the heretics like the Sanborn, they don't insist on that either. Which is very grave, grave thing, the grave offense in front of God. They are destroying the flock of Christ. They are luring people who otherwise would be approaching us 
for being abjured from heresy and being admitted into the church. They are loading them into their assemblies and tying them with the, these diabolical heretical doctrines and, and then they are stuck in that mire of sin. And they cannot be absolved because heretics cannot absolve. So it's a, it's a, it's a serious situation as it is. The effect of the symptom of Aquinas. By the very fact that a person communicates in the sacraments with a heretic who is cut off from the church, he sins and thus approaches the sacrament insincerely and cannot obtain grace, except perhaps in baptism in case of necessity. That's, but that's, that's perhaps. Okay, that depends on the situation. It's, it's very individual and very rare. The effect of absolution, it says in the yellow there, that's a part of objection one. The effect of absolution is nothing else but the forgiveness of sins which results from grace and consequently a heretic cannot absolve as neither can he come for grace in the sacraments. Moreover, in order to give absolution it is necessary to have jurisdiction which one who is cut off from the church has not. Without that jurisdiction, permission from the Holy See to be able to hear uh, confessions no, and, and plus they are not absolved, plus they are not priests because of those defects. Uh, and bishops like this Sanborn, he's not a bishop because of those defects that took place in the, when the excommunicated heretic uh, Archbishop Go has committed and, and so forth. So to have the audacity to go to non Catholic sect at the face value of their saying that they had received messages from our Blessed Mother and so forth and such perverted things which he should have recognized in the first place from the beginning and never have anything to do with them without proper training and, and all this. Our situation is completely different as the extraordinary situation that God had to intervene because otherwise he would uh, negate his promise the gates of ocean of people against, against the church. So in our case the situation is completely different and it's straight the work of God. In their case the church was still able to, to produce people who would be true Catholic but he negated it, this Archbishop of God. He was a horrible heretic. And God knows what that was because his whole family, they saying, was murdered, including the president of Vietnam, his brother, and chief of police, who was another his brother, another brother. And uh, so his family was murdered. So he was, there's nobody to confirm that that was truly this, this person. So it could have been what the communists had, and probably still do, they murdered a person of interest and assume uh, his identity and present somebody who is a high, highly trained agent in, in his stead. And then that person doesn't have the dignity of, uh, in this case. The church has even been insistent not to, to make sure that if somebody was, there was a case of a priest from the United States who was captured in, in communist Russia and held there for 20 years in gulags and so forth, and uh, this, it's, it's a little bit a complicated situation as it is, and, and we will not enlarge on that, but he wrote about it. And uh, when he was released finally from his captivity, uh, somebody had to meet him at the airport who knew him so that they would make sure that, uh, that it's truly really him and not some kind of planned communist agent uh, who would then present himself as, as this person. and. So they had to make sure because the communist Russians, especially the KGB and so forth, they were doing it. So uh, we don't know if there's any uh, positive proof that this was truly Archbishop Shon Go, and we don't even know. We take what they say and consider it as such, but that he went to non-Catholic sect and attempted to administer uh, sacrament of warriors, including ordination and episcopal consecration. That in itself illustrates that he has he had no understanding and God was not helping him to understand that that will be automatically invalid because that's defect of intention. Those people will not be practicing the Catholic faith. They were already heretics and they will not offer sacrifice to God, which is the Tridentine Mass. Does know the holy sacrifice to God? So holy sacrifice of the man. And as, so uh, if, since he didn't know that and he approached them. Or he didn't care, or whether he was truly, if he was in in good standing with the church, he would not even talk to them about anything. He would know right away what they approaching them and uh, what they were saying that they are 
it's the work of the devil. And so he would tell him, no, that's not possible, and leave the room. That's it. I will not be talking to you anymore because this, this, is, this is the proof of what you're saying, that that's not the work of God, what you are asserting. Plus, you have to have proper training, as a, uh, ecclesiastical training for the becoming priest and, and, and so forth. So there's no such thing. And without it, he attempted to not only to ordain them to priesthood, but then 10 days later or so, he attempted to consecrate them bishops. It's invalid. So then that's the Palmar de Troya and the old, old Catholic sect in, in, in France. So and from this come, comes this so-called succession, which is invalid, especially when he is visible there on the pictures. We have shown this many times. We don't need to go through it. But shown in the pictures that he has a phone on the, on the altar, on that table, whatever he says. Uh, it looks like a kitchen. It's, it's, it's just it's, it's preposterous. No matter how small he had the place where he was staying at that moment, that's a dignified place for him to say the mass, much less to administer sacrament of audio or as a piece of consecration. So yes, they cannot absolve the heretics. So um, it's, it's, there's, there's no grace of the sacraments. And, and so to have somebody, to admit somebody into your chapel, into their chapel, like this, this heretic Sanborn does, that's the illustration and proof that Troy, this, the Sidibicontus heretic, uh, he proves the cause behind his heresy. That he's violating the canon law, it's not even regarding the canon law. In that part that he said that he, they don't call them heretics, there's no result of sect. Well, then that's, that's the proof that he's not true bishop because that's his duty towards God to exercise that and to say directly and to tell them, now you have to observe the heresy, you have to go through the whole process, you have to be examined and so forth. And then you have to observe the heresy, be conditionally baptized if you come from the sect. And, and he does not even call in them heretics. So, and public sinners, he doesn't, doesn't do that. For him, the, the matter is that they would preserve their status. Of, that doesn't even apply here because the sect has no say. They don't have any authority. So because simply this, the, the canon law provides that they, if they were truly in good standing with the church, that they would know what to do. They would follow the canon law. They would, not, they would know that they are the ones continuing the church and, uh, and then they, are, they have duty to obey, obey the canon law and obey the church and, and be in communion with the Holy See. They will recognize us as such because they will understand the, the, the circumstances and so forth. No matter how difficult it is, the Holy Ghost would lead them to it they would understand that this is the truth and this is truly the authority of the church and that they have to be subject to it. And this, this Sanborn is granting them partial, this horrible sect, granting them some kind of partial possession and that's it, our ability to elect, which is impossible. It's a heresy. Therefore, if someone recognizes the Vatican II, quote, Pope and, quote, bishops as the true Catholic hierarchy, then these same ecclesiological principles logically require the priests of the institute to refuse sacraments to them. For there is no reasonable cause present to distribute sacraments by Epicaea to those who logically should be going to the Vatican II hierarchy for sacraments. Furthermore, there is no reasonable cause for those who adhere to the Vatican II hierarchy to approach a priest for sacraments who holds that the legislator, the local bishop, is absent, owing to the promulgation of heresy. In other words, neither Christ nor the Church can authorize at the same time both the Novus Ordo clergy and the traditionalist clergy to, to distribute sacraments. Only one of these distributes legitimately, the other distributes illegitimately. Only one distributes as having jurisdiction from the true hierarchy of the Catholic Church, the other distributes without authorization and jurisdiction from the true hierarchy of the Catholic Church. I think that's an excellent formulation, Your Excellency. It's, it's a question of, well, where where is the church? Where... Yes, it, all, it 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 comes down to that. Where is the church? What is Vatican II? Uh, are these people heretics or not? Do they promulgate heresy or not? It, it all is is combined in there. It's all bundled up in there. You see, that's that's why we have that policy. And how is that policy implemented day to day? I mean, you may not know that this person also goes to mass uh, with, uh, somewhere else or goes to the Novus Ordo potentially. 
Well, we don't know. The general rule is that if someone presents him or herself piously at the communion rail, you give them Holy Communion. I mean, we, if Novus Ordo is correct, then we are wrong. If, if we are right, then Novus Ordo is wrong. We can't both be right about this. We are on opposite sides, you see, and, and uh, you, you must make a choice. Uh, and what do you find is normally the outcome of these conversations? Most understand, uh, others do not. They just go away and you know do whatever they please. But uh, our job is to to respect the truth and uh, be consistent with the truth. And really, I don't care what they do. <laughs> I'm so surprised, Your Excellency. <laughs> I know it's you know, not unlike me to be so hard. Right. <laughs>
no matter what they they have no matter what heretics they have they don't have excuse not to obey the pope which is our person in present time so we have not asked for this office but by the very fact what we teach by the very fact how we have obtained it how god is helping us otherwise if he was not helping us that would be the proof that we are truly not not the truth that this is not the truth and then uh, that would be the indication but we don't have any outside help it's only our lord helping us and that's it and it's a very heavy crosses as they are because and we think that that's uh, our lord wishes us to see what he had to go through how he was rejected by the the obstinate refusal of the jews and the, the pharisees and so forth so it's reappearing as it is the life of our lord is reflecting in our difficulties as it, as they are and uh, we understand this but it's we wish for people to be to save their soul uh, we pray for it in every at every mass daily at mass and uh, but if they decide that they will not uh, seek the truth and go to assemblies of heretics then they have no chance and then there's nothing we can do for them we are not even obligated to help them because they are refusing to obey the truth they are refusing the truth as it is that means they don't love don't love god but what he says so that's the first point the second point what he says at the end of that excerpt that's significant too because then what he said that the, the rule that rule says that uh, the they those those people they have to remove their impediment well but how they will manage that if they are heretics that's impossible they can ask for the, the they can learn the faith yes but then there has to be abjuration of heresy that's to be done in the church but somebody who has the faculty of absolve them from to absolve them from heresy because of this kind of law that's the obstacle to their so they, if they go to people like this like sanborn who doesn't even tell them that that's the sign of uh, exact proof that that person is is a heretic or doesn't care what the kind of law says excommunication excommunication the reserve to the holy see especially model befalls befall all apostates from the christian faith and all heretics and schismatics and it's it's, it's a factor by the very fact they profess false religion false faith or heretical opinion that was condemned that is evident against the church against the faith then that they are excommunicated outside the church and as if so far so that's the protection of the church so if for them to be absolved they have to go to the proper channels that means and there's nobody right now because of the cost of the span of time since the last good pope we had that's pope Pius the 12 until our present uh, authority and and papal dignity and papal office that we hold that they cannot be absolved it has to go through our person through our consideration they have to do the abjuration of heresy so they can just say oh uh how they told so this rule what the sanborn has is not only insufficient it's heretical because it denies that because it uh, it uh, uh, touches on matters of faith so then have they have to follow they are obligated to follow, to follow the canon law that's why these heretics frequently and most of the time uh, bypass the canon law and uh, make up their own rules which the sanborn illustrates so just to take somebody into the into the sacristy and explain to them why they didn't receive their their host which is not the holy communion to begin with because he doesn't even have a cross on the front face of the altar and has new place in reading pennsylvania in the united states that's not sacrifice to god but plus those things that we have already explained why he's not bishop so uh, and he's a set of account set of privation is heretic so people who go there they sin mortally by just approaching that place and going inside and and attempting to uh, go to their so-called ceremony which is not a mass and uh, so uh, then they are still excommunicated that he cannot absolve you he cannot absolve you from sins he's a heretic that's the illustration that he's a heretic so then going to sacristy with him because he refused to give the the house which is not consecrated the body of which is not the holy communion to begin with to somebody who uh, whom he sees 
uh, that that person is, uh, or he fears, he said, that's not sufficient either. It's, it's not sufficient uh, uh, protection of the sanctity of the sacrament, because that's really, at least that's what it should be, but it's not in this case. So God is not mocked in this case. But because it is in his will to allow this, and they have it in their rules, this laxity, this, this uh, uh, permissiveness, which is forbidden by canon law, then, uh, then, then they, they, they illustrate that they are heretics. It's, it's not possible to, to allow such people to, to do this. This is straightforward. This, there's, no, there's, no, there's no way around it. So if they disobey this and say, oh, but we will, we will just consider who comes and if they are dressed nicely and they are piously acting, they will not be refused. It's, and it's not Holy Communion. And, and, and the church says no, because that's not possible to be admitted. That person has to be investigated who that person is. Whomsoever enters their place, has, they have to have the certitude that that person is truly baptized, because any infidel can come in and dress nicely and pretend that he's Catholic. And in these our times, that's considerable. Well, it's not like 100 years ago, when people have some conscience and they would not do this kind of sacrilege, although perhaps there may have been some cases and the church was always protecting the flock and preventing such situations to happen. That's why the office of the porter is there. And uh, so then uh, it, it, you have to make sure that the church is protected, that the Holy Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, does not lose its integrity or dignity in its sense that you allow somebody who is not Catholic, who is a, a horrible heretic or sinner, to enter, to begin with. Such people must be prevented from entering the place, period. So, but this especially in these our times so some of these fraudulent orders they mount their uh, cam video cameras which is another soccer which is it is or uh, just this is not <clears throat> this is not the approach they have to be certitude that that person is to be catholic baptized that is, he's not a heretic he or, or she are not heretic and that they abjure that if they are they have to be admitted into the church proper way and these heretics, who are themselves heretics, they cannot do it. And so if you attempt to go to these places, you will only add more guilt on your soul, more scars of sin, and you will only displease God the more. And, and anger him, and you will pay for it. That's how serious the situation is. We could play more except, but this, these are the essential proofs of what this heretic is saying in this. And then he says in, in that other place, He's adding that he couldn't care less. So if that's not demonstrating the, the, the he must be bearing witness to the truth and uh, in front of them to tell them, no, you are part of non-Catholic sect. You cannot come here without abjuring the heresy, without being properly admitted. You have to, we have to examine whether you understand and profess the Catholic faith, which is Catholic tradition, and nothing else but Catholic tradition. That means you have to be examined how, whether you study the catechism and, and all this. So, and then, and only then, uh, you, and plus if you come from the novice of the sect, you have to be conditionally baptized because we have to make sure that you are truly baptized. And then we have to understand where you're coming from, but there's not, not any other impediment like you, uh, the marriage problems and annulments and all these kind of things that the sect invented. And so forth. So it's more complicated. We have not touched yet on the subject of marriage, the sacrament of holy matrimony, because that's so complex and so difficult in the sense of because there are so many situations that could be applied and permissions of the Holy See in previous times in regards to heretics and so forth, in the sense of how their so-called marriage was was uh, approached or and, and and so forth. Cases of infidels who had several wives and then they, they wanted to be Catholic and they, they show sign of conversion. God great, uh, give them the, gave them the grace to, to be able to, uh, to convert to lend the faith and then, 
and then what to do and so the church resolved it properly and so such cases are known they are rare but yes they are known so in that case that has to be individual exam so we can't be speaking on in general terms uh on the on the subject because that's just so complex so plus but in regards to their these heretics do not approach them for sacraments that's that's that's, that's a grave uh, offense in front of god to go to heretics for sacraments and moreover these people are not priests uh, and not bishops and so forth and to illustrate who they are is they disregard all the constraints of the canon law and they do not recognize that God provided for his church the true sovereign pontiff who is our person at the present time and that it is it would be a heresy if there was no pope that's the point in that case especially in the the, the, the span of time which they tried to justify in the previous times but that's no longer that's that's not even possible to maintain because in this case that will have to be admitted that then God would have uh, abandoned the church for 65 years if the set of uh, had any value in their opinion or something but but their opinion is heretical it's it's it's, it's preposterous plus because of that canon 2314 1917 code of canon law uh, because of that constraint there is uh, there would be no mercy of god if there was no true pope because no one else can absolve heretics apostates and schismatics from their excommunication it says uh, excommunication is reserved to the holy see specially more in a special way that means strict way as it is and so this, this, the mercy of god will be diminished destroyed virtually if there was no pope for 65 years Now God has lost the canon that the, the law of the church permits 18 days for voting. That's Vacantis Apostolic Causa Series of Pope Pius XII. Not only that, but he forbids and prevents and, uh, uh, and uh, truly by his authority, uh, our predecessor of happy memory of Pope Pius XII, he says that they cannot, the cardinals who are canonically deposed from that office cannot approach the voting it cannot be uh, admitted into the conclave and cannot be uh, subject of the voting cannot be included in the voting so that they could not so that means canonically deposed that includes all heretics so heretics cannot approach the so that's why they had they were very careful they were secretly enemies of the church in 1958 after Pius XII died they assembled they Ron Kali was there, and then they elected him. But visibly, the church cannot judge because they were internally preparing the, the attack, but they knew that they had to wait. They were already enemies. Not all of them, but a substantial amount of them. And, and then, then, so they obtained the papacy validly, but Ron Kali abused it and misused it, and then he excommunicated himself in 1962, when he, early 1962, when he published the Heretico Pont Pontifical Romanum, Roman Pontifical, with, especially with the Episcopal Consecration of Right, that contains heresy. In the sense how the sacrament is administered, that's violation of the authority of the Church. The Pope has no authority to do that, and he excommunicated himself because of Council of Trent, who, uh, which in Canon 13, Session 7, Sacraments General, forbids that to be done to institute new sacraments by every pastor of the Church. If anyone says that that's possible, let him be anathema, it says. So, Roncalli did exactly that. He instituted new sacrament, new Episcopal consecration rite, and on that account, he cut himself off from the unity of the church, and also gave consent to him by their silence, by their consent, direct consent, explicit consent. Then they lost their clerical offices of, of, of cardinals and so forth. So, then, but they had substantial time to damage the church and then of course nobody would say so and that's that's the problem that we are faced with that's since then the church is in the catacombs but god has maintained the papacy there's there's no doubt about it except in in, in supernatural way as it is but otherwise if this was not true what we say or this was not our office 
then how can we obtain the knowledge and understanding that and direction and the conversion and our episcopal, episcopal consecration which we have obtained by showing uh, way that God only instituted, God ordained and God provided. And the devil who hates us, who causes great harm daily and heavy situations, very difficult difficult situations as it is, and he controls those who, uh, the, the heretics, who is most of the world today, who will not help us because they are truly, they are heretics, and the devil is their master, so the devil doesn't want the church to continue, obviously. So God is not helping them because they offend him. Because they go to people who are his enemies for fraudulent doctrines that lead them to hell. That's how e how evil the situation is. So, but we have to continue the, 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 the church, and we do continue the church by these kind of recordings that declare, and by our apostolic authority, we declare and de define that uh, declare that this these kind of publications of heretics must be avoided at all costs. On, on pain of uh, incurring our displeasure and also if they people believe it on pain of excommunication as it is for heresy because these are heretics and they publish heretical falsehoods and purposely so this is this what this Sam Bourne is publishing that's proved that he does not wish people to publish to, to understand the truth that they are constraints of the canon law they cannot be set aside so he says no if they are nicely dressed and if they approach us, then we will generally give them the host, which is not Holy Communion to begin with. God is not mocked. God provided for his protection, for protecting his honor and so for protecting his church by not allowing these heretics to proceed and to obtain, which they would not have obtained in, because God would still not permit them to obtain the grace of the sacrament. And he has not granted that. Uh, regardless, even if they administer the sacraments correctly and validly. The grace of sacraments is not there. As St. Thomas teaches, we have read it. Heretics cannot obtain grace in the sacrament. So, and there is no valid man. That should suffice today. It is dogma divinely revealed outside the Catholic Church, the true Catholic Church, without practice of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, has absolutely no salvation. Or heretics, infidels, or apostates, or schismatics, or enemies of the church, like the same born who is with Andus, uh, and the rest of them, we, which we have named by name in our bull of excommunication from 15th May, uh, 15th day of May uh, 2021, Anno Domini. So all these people were burning in hell, do burn in hell, including the enemies of the church, like the communists, socialists, and so forth, atheists. So do not be one of them. And uh, divine punishment is near, it's approaching. The, time are very evil and uh, the time of the Antichrist will be very evil. People will have to die, have, uh, hide from uh, those who will wish them to, to exterminate them because they believe in the existence of God for that very purpose. And many will compromise on that precisely because these people who serve the Antichrist who are truly communists and atheists then uh, they will not tolerate any of this and the church will be even more in hiding and so forth but the church will be protected it says so the lord promised that and it's recorded in the apocalypse that there will be done so mm. and god is helping us that's without any doubt and people are not helping us because they don't believe that this is the truth and that doesn't alter the truth itself that's insufficient to alter the truth that should suffice today Reconsider, or God will punish you. Reconsider very gravely that you are in grave situation as it is. As heretics, you have to be absolved, and no one has the authority to absolve you from that, that sin and that crime of heresy, except our person and our authority, apostolic authority, which we do possess by divine grace, divine election, and by the joy work of God.